there are different forms of energy. One of the forms of energy is light. Here I have pictures of different sources of light energy. I have a torch, flame or fire. Then fireworks, we get light from these sources. We have sun and a bulb or we can even say a tube light. So these are examples or pictures of some of the sources of light. Here I have a torch and you can see that the light is coming on the wall. Now, if I put an object in between this path, you will see a shadow forming on the wall. If I bring the object near to the light or the source of light, the shadow is going to grow bigger. Observe carefully, here you can see the shadow of the cat. It's getting bigger and bigger as I come nearer to the source of light. Now I'm going to do an experiment to show how does a shadow move during the day. In the morning time, afternoon and then in the evening time. In the morning the shadows are the longest. As the sun goes up, you can see that at noon time the shadow is the shortest. It's just under the object. And then when the sun begins to set, the shadow begins to grow longer on the other side. And it is the longest when it is about to set. In the first experiment, I was moving the object which was a cat and the shadow was moving. In the second experiment, I was moving the torch and the shadow was also moving. This shows us that shadows move in both the situations. If we move the object and if we move the source of light. Light travels through matter, but sometimes it doesn't travel through matter. When an object allows light to pass through it, it's called a transparent object. This means all the light passes through it. Some objects do not let all the light pass. They let part of the light pass through it and they are called translucent objects. However, there are another kind of objects that stop the light from passing through and form a complete shadow. Those are called opaque objects. I'm going to show you examples of these now. First of all, I'm going to place a magnifying glass in front of this torch. And you can see that the glass part is allowing the light to go through, whereas the surrounding plastic is opaque and it is not allowing the light to go through. The next object I have is a marker, which is opaque. It is not letting any light pass through it. So it is an opaque object. Now I have a plastic glass and we can see that it lets light pass through it, not completely, not very clearly, but partially, yes. So it can be called as a translucent object. And now I have a piece of plastic which is colored and we can see that it lets the light pass through it. You can see that clearly here when I place it just in front of the light, that we have a light peach or a light pink shade of light on the wall. If the plastic was not translucent, it was opaque, it would have stopped all the light. But it allows the light to go through it partially. So it's a translucent object. Like solids, all liquids do not let light pass through them. Here I have water which is transparent because it is letting the light pass through it. In the next bowl I have ketchup which is opaque because it is blocking the light. Milk is also opaque because it is not letting the light pass through. In the last bowl I have oil which seems to be translucent because it is partially allowing the light to go through it. In this experiment our source of light is a candle. The flame is moving and we can see that along with the flame the shadows also tend to move. I have placed four objects in different directions around the candle and we can see the strength of the shadows is the same for all the four objects. This shows us that light moves in a similar way all around.